Hello and welcome to Quartzlight, your car brochure channel and in today's episode we're going to be starting a new series for Ford Cars because it's Ford Friday of course Ford Cars March 1987 Part 1 Fiesta Hello and welcome back now if you're new to Quartzlight we're a car brochure channel here on YouTube Looking at car brochures from around the world for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s and sometimes beyond those years as well. So if you're interested in cars, car brochures, looking back at cars we all remember and do please consider subscribing. It is all completely free. Anyway, back to today's episode. Yeah, it's going to be a new series. We've been looking at a lot of Australian Fords recently. Let's go back to the UK. UK Fords again, or European Fords, if you prefer. This brochure is from the UK, and it's dated March 1987 for the full Ford range. Therefore, today will be the new series. It's, of course, going to be the Ford Fiesta. But let's throw that on the board, and I'll explain why we chose this brochure. So here is today's brochure. Like I say, it just says cars on the front in red. March 1987, just... Simple Ford badge at the bottom there, showing a Ford Sierra on the cover, of course. So why this one? Well, I chose this one. Well, let's throw up the one that I almost uh, chose to do today. The Ford Cars brochure, February 1987. So one month previously, I was going to do this one. But then I decided to do the March one for one reason. I don't know if anyone can guess what reason is, what model arrived in this one that wasn't in this one well in March 1987 we've got the arrival of the Ford Sierra Sapphire so the updated Fords and indeed the Sapphires in this one as well surprisingly it doesn't appear in this one because I always thought February 87 was kind of like the date for the restyled Sierras and the arrival for the four door but no here Nothing at all um, in here about the Sapphire, surprisingly. First appearance in this March 1987 brochure, so it makes sense to do this one rather than this one. I'm sure you all agree. But if there's anything particular in this one that's missing from this one, and if it sort of changes, I'll certainly refer back to this earlier one. So yeah, this is a very comprehensive range of cars, including that new Sierra Sapphire. The car that really we'd been waiting a long time for if you was a Ford Cortina buyer and then a Sierra buyer. Always missed that booted Sierra. Well, here it is now. But of course, this is episode one. So episode one, we're going to be looking at Fiesta. So it starts here. Fiesta, proudly showing kind of like the range topper, the XR2, probably my favourite Fiesta of them all. Of course, we're still a Mark II Fiestas at this time. I always kind of like swing between preferring and always preferring my favourite Fiesta as being the Mark I or Mark II Fiesta. I kind of like change my mind depending on what I'm looking at, really. But I think, if I'm honest, my favourite Fiesta of them all is a Mark II XR2. Here it is, shown here with some rather nice alloy wheels. However, we're going to look at the range, so we've got a long way to get to this uh, range topper, which was slightly more expensive than the 1.4 gear, but we'll talk about that later on. Let's go to the base model Fiesta. And here it is, the Fiesta Popular, the cheapest model in the range at this time closely followed by the popular plus these are kind of like sharing a page i think the other pages have denote one model a page on on a double page i think later on but popular and popular plus shown both on this double page we'll start here though looking at this popular see how much of a poverty spec vehicle it was i think this is probably a popular plus but we'll work that out in a moment so let's look at this text and this blue example so it starts by telling us Fiesta Popular, economical and versatile, the value for money Fiesta Popular is one of today's best buys on four wheels. It starts talking about the key features, which of course aren't going to be many because, hey, it's a popular. 
It tells us a robust, reliable 950 engine, developing 45 PS and runs on two-star petrol. Laminated windscreen, halogen headlights, lockable cap for 40 litre fuel tank, reversing lights. And that is it. And then rather confusingly, doesn't show a Fiesta popular on the page next to it. It's actually a Fiesta popular plus because the popular didn't come with a rear wash wipe. And then this is the only picture. I show you that two page spread, uh, spread there. I was kind of like thinking this first page was all going to be the popular, but no, this is the only picture for the popular. This very grainy image. And it even tells us the Fiesta popular above has an optional heated rear windscreen at extra cost. So even the model displayed here, apparently it's got, well, it's pretty much impossible to see it, but it's telling us that it has got an optional heated rear windscreen, which really tells us how basic the Fiesta popular was. You would have been, I don't know who that was really aimed at, to be honest with you, the popular, because... I'm sure it wasn't much more to get to a popular plus to get a few little features on it so I'm not sure who really bought these extremely base model populars. Um, if we look down it does rather sh confusingly show this picture of this rear wash wipe right next to the popular. I'm sure that's not accidental but that is certainly confusing but maybe that's why they put it there to try and move you up to the next model. It tells us the Fiesta Popular Plus features include a tailgate wash wipe, the rear window's heating element switches itself off after 10 minutes. So when we zoom out again we can see the only thing about the Popular is this tiny little paragraph here and this image and I think this is really demonstrating the fact that Ford really didn't want you to buy the Fiesta Popular. It was more there for, you know, the Fiesta range starts at and get that as low as possible for advertisement purposes. I'm not sure if you walked into the dealership, they probably wouldn't even have a Popular in there. They'd try and move you up to at least a Popular Plus. Um, and I think that's what it was there for. Possibly, sometime Ford's um, fleet buyers often bought the most base model, although for your Fiesta. I'm not sure which type of company would buy a Fiesta as a fleet vehicle. You'd think more Escort Sierra. But maybe as in rental hire or your know, rental vehicles, hire vehicles, maybe. I'm not sure. Comments who you think the Fiesta Popular was really aimed at. Because like I say, I personally think it was just there to say the Fiesta range starts at... And then get you in the dealership say, you know, I want a Fiesta Popular. And no, sir. No, no, ma'am. Let's move you up a bit to a higher model. I think that's what it was more there for. Um, actually, interestingly, in the month before his brochure, they did try and separate the two models a little bit more. More information about the Popular here. And this is a Popular. So they certainly separated it better. Um, but certainly as time went on, I think that Fiesta Popular became less and less popular, personally. Um, interesting to see the seats, though. As basic as you can make it, really. So this is 1987, and they're still trying to sell you a car without head restraints, which is crazy, isn't it, really? And you can see on the seats, there isn't even a place to pop the head restraints on as sort of like an aftermarket thing. So that is a little bit of a crazy one. Bit of a weird model overall. Dashboard, blanking plugs are high, as little as they could put on them really. So anyway, back to our brochure we're looking at, March 1987, we've now moved up to the Popular Plus, we've been convinced that that isn't the model we want, so what do we get here? So it says, true to its name, the Fiesta Popular Plus builds on the Popular's solid foundations by providing extra equipment and a choice of engines. They include Ford's remarkably refined and economical 1.6 litre diesel. So you could only get the 950cc engine for the popular, but now we've moved up, we get a choice of a 950, a 1.1 or indeed that 1.6 litre diesel. Five speed gearbox standard with the diesel. 
Bodyside mouldings, two door mirrors now, laminated windscreen and reversing lights, tailgate and heated uh, window and wash wipe, colour toned fleece carpet in passenger compartments, grey fleece carpet in boots, front, front seats with adjustable head restraints, and we also now get a digital clock and it also gives you some information about uh, the space inside your Fiesta. So a look inside your Popular Plus and like it says we do now get a digital clock which is nice. Still lots of blanking plugs of course though. Um, just a reminder on the Popular. So just a reminder the place up here somewhere just a blanking plug where that digital clock would have been for your Popular Plus. Look like we get a radio though, it kind of advises us to get the forward push button MWLW radio is a Fiesta Popular Plus option available at extra cost. It comes complete with a center console that provides additional storage space so you don't even get that console if you don't order the radio with your Popular Plus. This indeed is your interior of the Popular Plus and again they've kind of like included that extra little console and the radio which was an optional extra for this model but at least you get head restraints now. That is least something. And as we saw before tailgate wash wipe and a heated rear window. And then this is your look at the Popular Plus showing those head restraints and we've got two door mirrors now. Looks like we get also get a little bit of a, a tape stripe going down the side there as well. Oh and incidentally just before we move to the next model this little uh, round section which is a blanking plug on both the popular and popular plus this is going to be your illuminated uh, cigarette lighter so we'll see that on the next model up but let's move on to see what comes after the popular plus. Sorry here it is the Fiesta L. Um, seen here in all its finery and like I say we're now we're moving on to more probably the cars that they're trying to sell double page spreads from here on in so the L we've still got a lot more equipment as you can see by how much text there is and then we'll have a look at these images so it tells us the well-equipped Fiesta L's versatility is enhanced by a back seat that split folds 60-40 I'm assuming the low models didn't get that. To extend the boot while retaining passenger space. A choice of engines enables the specification to be tailored like a Savile Row suit, apparently. So yeah, so another engine looks like it's joined the choices on the L. So we can have a 950, a 1.1. We can now get a 1.4 lean burn engine as well. As well as that 1.6 litre diesel. Smooth, precise, five-speed gearbox, standard with the 1.4 and diesel. So, kind of like think it would have been worth getting the 1.4 just to get that five-speed gearbox. I would say, unless you want it to be extremely miserly and get a diesel, of course. Tells us the paintwork's protected by wide bodyside mouldings. We get a remote control driver's door mirror, laminated windscreen, heated rear window, tailgate wash wipe attractive silver centre caps for wheels when before they were black colour toned velour carpet central console with convenient uh, coin rack illuminated cigar lighter like I say that was that round area um, five trimmed front seats with padded fully adjustable head restraints dipping rear view mirror and it tells us that radio is now standard for your L model there is the inside on the L, still pretty basic, um, but we can see that round area has got that cigarette lighter in there now. Nicer looking seats and door cards though, and we've now got the proper padded headrest rather than that just hard sort of A-frame style. And like I say, we've got a split 60-40 rear seat. And then we've got a main image of this Fiesta L and we notice you know the centre caps are now silver like that was a huge improvement but we do have these rather nice and maybe I'll just zoom in a little bit further rubbing strips going down the side which were certainly a good thing in supermarkets to stop all those dents or personally I think it was worth at least moving up to the L trim 
nicer head restraints as well in that colour that so many lower spec Fiestas seem to be in then we move up to the Fiesta you aspired to own if you liked a little bit of luxury on your small Fiesta um, but not too much luxury let's not get carried away um, always seems to be strange how you went from an L to a gear I think on the Fiesta range you always feel like there should have been a GL in there somewhere but with all having those popular and popular plus in reality there was plenty of different trim levels actually but anyway we'll look down the list to see what niceties you got on your fancy gear model I think seats nicer seats is really the main thing because you didn't even get alloy wheels which always seems a bit weird for uh, again a gear but maybe that's just me anyway yeah we'll look at the text then we'll come back to the images so it tells us big car luxury combines with small car economy and convenience in the coveted fiesta gear it comes complete with such attractions as tinted glass a sunroof a tachometer and four speaker audio equipment key features so a choice of a 1.1 or 1.4 litre lean burn engines five speed gearbox standard on your 1.4 which in tests has developed 75 ps for 0 to 60 in 10.8 seconds and given excellent economy front bumpers with overriders for extra protection tinted glass We've got stylish wheel covers now. This is what it's all about though. Colour keyed velour carpet. Seats trimmed with Olivia and crushed velour fabrics. Digital clock, tachometer, trip recorder and vanity mirror on passenger sun visor. Light for load compartments with colour keyed velour carpet. And we've got a self-seek FM cassette with four speakers and joystick balance control now. We do notice though a completely new dash which I always thought was weird you think it'd be more expensive to produce these sort of two different styles of dashboard but certainly looks far nice and far more modern with this dash on there and of course a nice um, cassette radio which wouldn't look out of place on the Sierras it looks very similar to a, a Sierra unit actually that so certainly very nice and of course like it says we do get a rev, rev counter on there so but remember this was a lot more expensive than the other models it was a bit of a jump um, if you got the 1.4 i think the xr2 was only very slightly more expensive than this so it was quite pricey for a small car and here is a look at it so such niceties as a sunroof now and we've got extra bright work on the bumpers and that rubbing strip going down the side wheels are now covered with wheel trims which i guess is an improvement over not putting anything on there and then we've got a little bit of an overrider on those front bumpers so it certainly looks a nicer looking car to be honest from the outside here is your sunroof it is sadly only a very basic unit it's just a simple a tilt unit or does completely remove it so i think i could have done without that to be honest inside it is a much nicer place to be and velour seats have always been my favorite um, even at this time um, overall it is a big jump up from the other models but that's not where the fiesta range ends we've also got the sporty models starting with the s with these unusual white wheel trims for reasons i'm not entirely sure uh, but we'll look and see what you got on that then we'll come back to these images so this is powered by the lean burn engine that delivers 75 ps ford's frisky 1.4 s you can only have it as a 1.4 is the answer if you want a sporty super mini that costs remarkably little to run the car's looks are as attractive as its performance so key features so a lively 1.4 lean burn engine combined test figures 0 to 16 10.8 seconds uh, with a 52.3 mile per gallon at 56 miles per hour and because it's at 1.4 of course we get that 5 speed gearbox as standard we get the full uh, wheel covers uh, bumpers and wide body side mouldings with red inserts now I always thought it was quite amusing actually like they always used to put the bright inserts on things like the gear to denote luxury 
change that and put red in its place for sporty <laughs> as simple as that um, we get halogen headlights supplemented by driving lights now a very much a Ford thing that like to do on their S models we get a two-tone paint scheme with grey paint below body side mouldings. Front bumper has overriders for extra protection. Fleece carpet for passenger compartments and boots. Illuminated heater controls, switches and cigar lighter. Front seats with height adjustable head restraints to reduce risk of whiplash injuries. All seats trimmed with quartz and bristol twirl fabrics. Storage facilities including door bins and glove box with lid, sports type steering wheel, tachometer, four speaker self-seek cassette sound system with joystick balance control and there is a look on the inside. Now the nice thing about these is this would actually be quite a bit cheaper I would imagine than the gear but from the outside it looks a little bit sporty like an XR2 so like a mixture of both worlds but when you look in the on the inside it certainly looks a lot cheaper looking than the gear and we've even gone back to those sort of hard head restraints sporty is the key there and certainly from that image it looks like an xr2 uh, but it is just the s a look on the inside and we can see that um, stereo radio cassettes player on there and a rev counter and of course we've gone to a more sporty steering wheel side image showing we've got a sunroof and of course those red inserts rather than the bright inserts denoting a sporty model and like i said before rather unusually they decided to put white wheel trims on there we also noticed the lower body is a different color than this sort of gray color we also get this very small front shot as well showing off its driving lights in that sort of traditional s trim um, idea from Ford and the model I guess you could say if you had the S this is probably the model you aspired to get the XR2 was always my favorite uh, Fiesta actually the Mark II XR2 I just liked the overall look of it I wasn't really too care how fast or how slow it was I just looked loved this look of it and certainly these alloy wheels look fantastic on that although I would imagine there would have been an optional extra, but we'll certainly find that out in a moment. But let's have a look at the text and come back to these lovely images. So it tells us, good for 0 to 60 in just 9.3 seconds. Ford's pace setting Fiesta XR2 gets its sizzling performance from a very efficient 1.6 litre engine. Power is complemented by modified suspension, low profile tyres and ventilated disc brakes for the front wheels. So we get a potent 1.6 litre engine with 5 speed gearbox as standard, developed 95 PS at 5750 RPM for strong acceleration and 109 miles per hour top speed. Sport suspension, low profile tyres, uh, front wheels fitted with ventilated fade fighting disc brakes. Stylish front and rear spoilers for enhanced aerodynamic efficiency. Halogen headlights plus powerful driving lights. Bumpers with red inserts. Full wheel covers. Alloy wheels are an attractive and appropriate option. So there we go. So just wheel covers were your standard fit for the XR2. But even here it's kind of like advising you to get the alloy wheels. And I think it really did suit these alloy wheels. And to be honest with you, most of them that I saw certainly had the alloy wheels on them so I'm sure the dealers would have talked you into that we get some windscreen wipers with intermittent setting for drizzle and fog velour carpets in passing compartments and boots courtesy lighting boots perforated grey headlining unique to sporty Fiesta XR2 we also get that same sports type soft feel steering wheel as the S. Instruments include tachometer and trip recorder and we get a self-seek FM cassette system with that four speaker with joystick balance control. Inside we've gone back to those rather much nicer head restraints for the XR2 and they tried to put a little bit of very subtle striping on there but i think they could have done so much more of the interior i don't think the interior really matches the outside 
I don't know. They could have done something or not played or something like that. Some brighter colours to liven it up. I always thought the inside was a little bit of a disappointment, really. It doesn't look that sporty. And then the main image. We've got this lovely image. Unfortunately, it does fall on the crease, but alloy wheels look really good. And one of my more favourable looking alloy wheels, I must admit. I did like these. Of course, we've got these driving lamps on there. And of course, the red inserts. Note, we don't get the sort of like rubbing strips going down the side anymore, unusually. And of course, it's not a two-tone colour. I don't know how I feel about that. But overall, I liked the look of the XR2. This example, so you've got a uh, number plate on there. I'm not sure if that's a made up one or a real one, but there it is. Red, of course, was a very popular color for these XR2s. Finally, we'll end with prices, and it isn't really a price list as such, including this unusual little table um, at the top there. Uh, these are the prices, so 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, and 8,000 pounds at the top. And then moving down this column, we've got the various different spec levels, um, starting with the Fiesta Popular. And you can certainly see on that chart um, the difference between the Popular and the Popular Plus. That price, was it? I don't know around about 500 pounds would you say the difference between the two was but i think it was certainly worth going to the popular plus and then we can see the range quickly moving along uh, along the right hand side there as the prices did indeed increase the interesting one for me is when you go to the end here you can see there that is your fiesta gear price how close it is but we can certainly see that the xr2 is a little bit more expensive than the gear and then the 1.4 s was actually quite keenly priced i feel um not much difference actually to the fiesta l so that's certainly an interesting one but i wanted to include that little bit of a chart to give you an idea how that price range changed and what is quite a big difference between the very base popular to the price of the xr2 so that actually takes us to the end of March 1987 and the Fiesta range. So are there any differences with the February 1987 Fiesta range? Well, not really, although there is one extra model. We did have a special edition actually in February 1987, the Fiesta Finesse. Although maybe we should save that one for one of our Saturday specials. Saturday specials, if you don't know, we look at a special edition every Saturday. So I think we'll save that one. Uh, the only thing, other things to note for February 87, it does rather nicely in this particular brochure, show you a nice little image of the back of the S and shows you how that is badged, 1.4 and this unusual S. And it shows in the XR2 in white instead of red. And I think... If I had to choose, I think I would have got it in white. I do like the XR2 in white. And really, that's really all the differences between those two brochures, actually. So there we go. So that is our quarter light and Ford Friday and the Ford Fiesta for March 1987. If you remember these, please do jot in the comments. Always enjoy reading all of your comments. Always very interesting. And of course, next week, for next Friday's Ford Friday, we'll be looking at the Escort range and seeing how that is for March 1987. If there's any differences with the February 87, we'll pick those little things out there as well. But we'll end by saying, as we always do, please do consider subscribing. It is all completely free. Yes, it doesn't cost a penny to subscribe. We'll end with this box and we'll add a couple of more boxes, is what I'm trying to say. One will eventually be the full series for this brochure but if you click on that at the moment it won't show that because if you're the first to watch this video the fiesta one will be the only one made but obviously if you look at it in years to come the entire range will appear on that box and then the second box i'll put some kind of random video up for you to watch but like i say thank you so much for watching today please do enjoy your day whatever day it is where you are all the best take care and goodbye.